Hey everyone, it's Sarah Newby. I wasn't really sure how releasing that first video that I released on Thursday was gonna turn out. I was actually really, really scared to release the video. Yeah. Truly thank you for your emails and your messages. Another common thread in the emails and messages is that you feel that I'm being brave and courageous in sharing and in taking a leap of faith. But I, I wanna say that it's not without a lot of fear, a lot of planning, a lot of planning and a lot of fear. And in full corporate spirit, I have created a PowerPoint slide. I am going to walk you through the five fears that I had when changing my career and starting a small business. Five fears I actually continue to have. Here we go. The first fear I had it will be a lot of work. Everyone says that making a change is a lot of work. And of course, starting a small business is a ton of work, but this doesn't just apply to those who want to start a business. This can apply to any type of change, a career change, for example, or maybe you wanna try a different role. Making a change is a lot of work. You've already climbed up some ladder and gained some skills, and now you have to go and start towards the bottom. What I realized and what I tell myself is that if you are an ambitious person, and most of you, most of my, the viewers that are watching this are really ambitious and are really, really good at what they do, and if you're an ambitious person, you will always be working hard. You will always be working hard and you will always find some way to succeed. And that's the beauty of this one, is that we get to choose what we work hard on. The second fear I had is that it will take up all of my time. I'm actually an avid weightlifter, at least at least I was until I started down this path. I haven't had the energy or the time. I'm, I mean, I believe you can really only make good, true progress in one area of your life at a time. That's the way to make fastest progress. And so I kind of had to put those athletic endeavors on the back burner for a little bit. But at first I struggled with that. And I was like, no, I want some downtime or some time for my other hobbies. And how I kind of decided, nope, it's now the time. It's time for change is that I realized that work doesn't necessarily have to be a negative experience. And when you're working on something that you enjoy, and I don't even realize that the time has passed, it doesn't feel like work. Even though I don't have much downtime anymore, it's not a negative experience. It's actually really, really positive. I am focusing on the short-term sacrifice for the long-term gain. And what I ask myself is, wouldn't you rather put the hard work in now to build the future that you want. And this is where you really have to assess what's important to you and what your values are and what you want out of life and out of every day, what you want out of the future and of the present. Take into account what's best for your own situation and then accept whatever decision you make. And of course, not making a decision is indeed a decision. Another way to put this, one of my absolutely favorite books the first video I talked about the four hour work week. This one is the Almanac of Naval Ravikant. I'm a big fan of Naval Ravikant. And he talks about this as well, where in any situation in life, you always have three choices. You can change it, you can accept it, or you can leave it. What is not a good option is to sit around wishing you would change it, but not changing it. Wishing you would leave it, but not leaving it, and also not accepting it. That's a recipe for misery. So definitely have those times of introspection and realize how you are contributing and how you are complicit in creating the situation that you're currently living. The third fear is, what if it doesn't work out? What if I fail, and especially if you are a perfectionist. I have to fight a lot of perfectionist tendencies. If you're a perfectionist or an overachiever, you're terrified of failing. And so how do I work through that really deep, deep fear? I've learned that we're kind of hardwired to focus more on the negatives than on the positives. And you can actually reframe some of those more negative thoughts. And when I find myself saying, what if I fail? what if it doesn't work out? I actually am teaching myself and I'm trained myself to say, what if it does work out? And 
even if I fail, what skills would I have learned? And that helps me to <laughs> quiet down that part that's scared of failure, to say, no, 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 don't, don't focus on what if it doesn't work out because I'm actually in control of if it does or does not work out. I can determine what the metrics are and what success looks like for me and if it does or does not work out. And no failure is true failure if you learn from it and you don't give up. In fact, failure is how we learn. And which brings me to, you get to decide what the definitions of failure and success are. Yes, there are commonly accepted definitions of failure and success that were kind of raised up in that might come from your family, your society, what you hear on social media or see on TV, and you create this picture of what success looks like. And you also have this picture of what failure is and what failure looks like. What's freeing, really freeing, is that you actually get to decide what failure is and what success is. And so I took my more traditional idea of what success is, where it was kind of climbing a career ladder and you know I wanted to make a certain amount of money. And now my ideal of success is really, am I doing what I want to be doing? Am I excited to wake up and work on what I want to work on? That's really how I'm guiding if I'm being successful or not. How I get over this fear of what if it doesn't work out and what if I fail? I remember to really value the fear of regret. And I ask myself, if I don't try this, if I don't do this, if I don't take this risk, will I regret it? And for me, the fear of regret far outweighs my, my fear of failure. So when I'm really in that spot where I am so afraid of what I'm doing, I'm like, okay, Sarah, are you more afraid of doing this or are you more afraid of not doing this? And when the answer is I'm more afraid of not doing the thing that I'm afraid of, I do the thing I'm afraid of. Fear number four. This is a, a deeply personal fear, but I think it ties into the need to be accepted by your peers and the need to be just accepted by society. It's the fear that if I make a change, whether that's a career change or starting a business or actually any type of change, if I make a change, no one will love me. And I'll kind of lose face or lose reputation with my network and with my friends. And this, this one is, an, at least for me, an interesting solution because making a change, it is uncomfortable and it's risky. Whether, again, whether you're changing your career, whether you're changing your role, whether you're changing where you live, whether you're changing what you look like, whether you're changing what you believe in, it is so uncomfortable and it is so risky. And indeed, it actually is true that folks' perception of you will change. So this is not an unfounded fear. This is actually something that, that does happen. But I found that those who kind of change their perception of me and no longer accept what I'm growing to, what I'm evolving to, uh, oftentimes their, their criticism is due to their own fears and their own insecurities. And maybe, maybe they're jealous that they didn't take an opportunity. Maybe they're living with a lot of regrets. And so I kind of take it with a grain of salt when my risk taking and my decisions aren't widely accepted by everyone that I come in contact with. And then I also remember that I can choose, you know, to care about what others think, or I can choose to evolve into the person that I want to be. You, you can't have both. You have to pick if you will stay comfortable in this tiny little bubble of other people's perception of you and other people's expectation of you. You either get that or you can choose to grow and evolve. The fifth fear, which is maybe the most unusual one, because we talk about we're afraid of failing. What do other people think? What if I don't make it? Another fear that I've felt as I take this leap of faith and as I make this change is what if it does 
work out? And what if all of my dreams and kind of everything that I'm picturing and think that I want, what if it all comes true? This is a fear because I know that in order to become the person that I want and to achieve the goals that I want to achieve, I, as a person, I have to change. It's an uncertainty. You don't really know who you're going to be or become on the other side of this journey that you're kind of taking on. And the growth you have when you take on a challenge, when you make a change, it will change you. You have to grow to meet the challenge. You have to change to meet the challenge. This fear of change can trigger like self-sabotage of your own efforts. And you should know this and expect it and kind of push, push through that resistance and realize when it's happening. Realize when, an example of this is, you know the most important thing that you should be working on and yet you don't work on it and you work on other little things, yet you know that this is the thing that matters and will propel you forward to meet your goals. That's one example of having this fear. What would happen if it does work out? You actually <laughs> self-sabotage, even though you know this is what you should do. You self-sabotage and do things that maybe don't have as much of an impact. And that's where this fear, you can see this fear coming out. What often limits us is not actually our potential or our talents. Those are pretty endless. You can gain skills to overcome a lot of natural inefficiencies or deficiencies that you feel you have. You're going to need to gain skills anyways and become excellent at what you do to have whatever change this is that you're wanting for yourself, for your career or your life. But what often limits us is that deep down we fear achieving our dreams. And when all of this self-doubt and self-sabotage creeps in, recognize it for what it is and that you're trying to protect yourself from change because change is uncomfortable. But you must keep on and just keep on and just give it all that you can. One book, I'm gonna leave you with this, another book, I, lo I, I love, love reading, is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And if this bit about what if it does work out, if that really resonates with you, read this book. It is life-changing, if that's kind of one of your fears. Those were the five fears that I had as I set out to make a change, and actually I still struggle with them every day. That's one reason why I am creating these videos, is to constantly remind myself and teach myself and internalize the learnings that I've collected as I've decided to make this change. And then I also want to share it with you. Maybe it can provide some value to you. If you like these videos, I would love it if you could subscribe. I am trying to reach a thousand subscribers. So if you would like to subscribe, I would absolutely love it. All right, until next time.